Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the channel. It's Zell here, and we are obviously jumping into another crap guide to Monster Hunter World. I need to educate myself before taking the plunge into Monster Hunter, my very first Monster Hunter game, which is World. Uh, and as Joe Cat put it in the Great Sword Guide, there's going to be a whole bunch of nooblets that aren't going to know how to play the game. I am indeed one of those nooblets. So, let's get into the Long Sword. We learn an awful lot with the Great Sword, so the Long Sword should be no different. Let's go. Let me ask you something, are you the kind of person who likes to turn the difficulty knob all the way down to a baby mode for babies? Do you like picking up on popular trends so you don't miss out on being included like the desperate to fit in anxious loser you are? While your peers were out having real lives and learning practical and social skills, were you busy studying the blade? Well hug your nearest otaku body pillow in celebratory fashion because I have the perfect weapon for you. Welcome to a crap guide to Monster Hunter. I realize these are just insults, at my expense. These are just insults thrown at me. And I have to sit here and take them. But also learning about how to use longsword, because that's very important. The longsword couldn't be any easier to use if the monsters you were fighting had frenzy cancer and were on life support. That's right, I just said what everyone else is thinking. Your reach is so far out there it could be mistaken for a flat earth theory. And your swing arcs are so all over the place and so fast like some kind of sword and shield wannabe, it turns the game into a cakewalk, like picking Bayonetta. This is a weeb weapon, perfect for anyone who unironically likes Sword On Online and wants to anime it up. The most anime move being the Helmbreaker, where you launch yourself up the monster, slashing down and causing residual explosions after the initial cut. I have no idea why it does this, but if I had to guess, it's by the power of pure weebs seeping into the monster causing cringe damage. The other anime move is the Foresight Slash, a stance that counters any attack that comes your way. And because I'm so good at Monster Hunter, I don't feel the need to show you all the footage of the myriad of times I was able to pull it off. Because I totally did pull it off every time I used it. Stop asking so many questions. However, there is a catch to these moves in that they're reliant on your spirit gauge, like a preteen reliant on their parent to bring them to that upcoming anime convention full of neckbeards. You fill it up by doing normal attacks and expend it by pressing R2, chaining together wide flashy swings that cannot bounce no matter how tough the to the monster, as if this weapon wasn't easy enough already. You finish it off with a roundhouse slash, increasing your damage to a maximum of three levels, and pose for the camera while dramatically sheathing your weapon. Seriously, what the hell is it with anime and sheathing swords? Your job as the longsword is to be an annoying little shit and interrupt everybody's attacks with your giant ass swing arcs. It's okay though, because you're at the top of the tier list and everybody only hates you because of how good you are. And definitely not because of how you jumped on the bandwagon because you saw it at the top of the tier list, like picking Bayonetta. And now you know how to use the longsword. You're welcome. I mean, if it's at the top of the tier list, that seems like something I should use. 